Hi, my name is Emily Payne and I'm an epidemiologist at Boulder County Public Health. Thanks for joining me today for this COVID-19 surveillance update. First, we'll start out by looking at some Boulder County data. This first graph is focusing on how PCR diagnostic testing for COVID-19 among Boulder County residents has changed over time. So you can see the graph shows that our trend has been going up, which is great. We want access to testing and we know that some articles have suggested that we should be aiming for around 500 tests per day in order to monitor our community for COVID-19. About 5,907 PCR tests had been performed in Boulder County through 2 p.m. yesterday, May 20th. We're hearing anecdotally from testing partners they're meeting the testing demand, but the demand has fallen. You can see over the past seven days that most days we have been between 100 and 200 PCR tests being performed per day. This graph shows the number of Boulder County residents who are newly reported as testing positive for COVID-19 or are who are considered probable, which means they're epidemiologically and clinically linked um, and highly likely to have COVID-19. You can see in the past month, there's been several days that we've had quite high case counts um, new reported that day. However, over the past 10 days, on average, we have had about 10 new cases reported to us per day for our investigators to follow up on. This graph shows the five day average number of those newly reported cases among Boulder County residents. We look at a five day average because that helps us to kind of smooth out and look at some trends. So you can see, as I mentioned, in that late April to early May time period, we saw quite a spike where we were seeing a five day average of over 20 cases per day. That has now fallen and we are at a five day average of around seven to eight cases per day at this point. We're also looking at where folks in the community are possibly being exposed to COVID-19. So this graph goes back starting with our first symptom onset, which was in early March. In the early days, we saw most of our transmission related to both community and travel, whether that be locally um, within Colorado to some mountain communities, um, you know, to other states in the United States or international travel. However, with the introduction of some of the stay at home orders, you can see that travel really fell off as a factor in transmission around late March symptom onset. Currently, most of our transmission is related to community and limited person to person transmission. Community can mean a wide variety of things. It could mean someone was exposed when out doing events in their community, for example, attending um, the grocery store, things like that. Or for some other folks, for example, those who live in long term care facilities, it could be being exposed through their community where they live. In addition, another factor that might be coming into community more and more now is transmission in the workplace. So all of those factors can drive that community transmission. For limited person to person transmission, that is generally household level transmission. So if someone, for example, someone in the household was confirmed to have COVID-19, they may have other household contacts who become sick as well. We'll be continuing to monitor this source of transmission very closely as we've sw switched over now to safer at home instead of stay at home. Travel could come back as a factor, so it's important for us to keep our eyes on this. We're also looking at how COVID-19 varies by Boulder County municipality. You can see here that Longmont is the municipality with the highest rate of COVID-19 per 100,000 population, with about 437 per 100,000 folks having been diagnosed with COVID-19 or probably having COVID-19. Boulder City is at about half of Longmont with 215 per 100,000 population with COVID-19. Lafayette and Louisville are also around a similar amount. We see lower rates per 100,000 in Erie and Superior, and also in unincorporated Boulder County. Municipalities with less than five cases are included in this rate graph because their rates could be unstable. This graph here shows how the distribution by municipality has changed over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
So starting in the earlier times, most of our cases were among folks in, who lived in Boulder City or in some of the other municipalities. You can see that around mid-April, we started seeing more cases pop up in Longmont. And now, in the past 10 days, about 53% of our cases have been in Longmont, and the other 47% have represented all other municipalities within the county. We're also seeing disproportionate numbers of our Hispanic and Latinx community represented among our COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. The groups shown on this graph have at least three cases in that race ethnicity group. We know the race and ethnicity for about 90% of our cases as of May 20th, which is great. It is actually quite above um, the statewide rate. So if we look at our Hispanic Latinx population, we can see they represent about 14% of Boulder County residents. However, they represent about 45% of our COVID-19 cases and 41% of our ever hospitalizations for COVID-19. This type of disparity can be connected back to systemic factors. For example, um, we may have more Hispanic Latinx community members in lower income brackets, just based on our statistical um, census data, we know that that is more likely to be the case. Those folks might be having to go to essential work and be less likely to stay at home. So there are really a wide variety of factors that are driving these disparities. We're continuing to keep our eyes very closely on these disparities and on the potential disparity in deaths. Currently, COVID-19 deaths mirror the percentage of the Boulder County population for each race ethnicity group. However, so, uh, most of our deaths are actually related to long-term care facilities. About 80% of the deaths that we've had so far among Boulder County residents have been among residents of long-term care. And we know that communities of color are less likely to be residents of long-term care facilities. So this could possibly be some of the reason we don't really see those disparities emerge um, in COVID-19 deaths, at least up through today. We can also see just like how the pattern of municipalities varied over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, the proportion of cases that are in each race ethnicity group have also varied. In the first several weeks of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, we really saw most of our cases among white non-Hispanic community members. However, this has really transitioned over and we're seeing more and more cases among our Hispanic and Latinx community members. In the past 10 days, about 60% of our cases with a known race and ethnicity have been among Hispanic Latinx folks. And as we transition to safer at home, this is something we'll also continue to monitor as more people are out and about and not as many are necessarily just the essential workers that are out and about. We're also closely looking at hospitalization, ICU status and outcome among our COVID-19 cases. You can see here that we've had COVID-19 cases among every age group, whether that be children, teens, young adults, and older adults as well. Hospitalizations, ICU use, and death are all higher among those older age groups. But you can see we've even had some hospitalized cases who are in their 20s. If someone was in the hospital or ICU and also deceased, they're only counted as deceased. So here, for example, if someone was in the hospital and then ultimately was deceased, they would be counted in deceased. Boulder County's hospitalization rate per 100,000 for COVID-19 has been lower than Colorado's and the national rate for much of this time. So Boulder County data, we're able to get um, you know, much more up-to-date data. So through May 18th, we know that about 46.1 per 100,000 population um, have been hospitalized for COVID-19. In Colorado, that data um, through a couple days prior showed about 68 per 100,000 hospitalization. And national data from about a week earlier showed about 60 per 100,000 hospitalization. This graph shows the number of new COVID-19 cases among Boulder County residents each day, just like the graph I showed you all earlier. However, this one shows how those cases are or are not associated with a long-term care facility. 
So the blue portion of the line shows those not associated and the orange portion shows those associated with a long-term care facility, whether that be a resident or a staff member of that facility. So this graph is really important for us to look at because we know that a lot of community members might be thinking, you know, this is a disease that is only affecting the elderly very strongly. Maybe I don't need to be worried. I don't need to socially distance as much. However, only about 27% of our cases have been associated with these long-term care facilities. And that means over 70% of our cases have been associated with the community. And you can see that as of in the past 10 days, that orange portion of the line is never more than about half of the line and usually is quite a bit smaller. So most of our cases are among community members who are not associated with long-term care facilities, which really drives home how important it is to continue with the social distancing, even if you're not someone who is associated with those long-term care facilities. We've also looked at our deaths among Boulder County residents who tested positive or were considered probable by date and they're associated with long-term care facilities. So like I mentioned earlier, about 80% of our deaths among Boulder County residents have been attributed to long-term care facilities. And those are all been long-term care facility residents. We have seen some deaths among community members not associated with long-term care facilities as well. Our most recently reported deaths was on May 15th, and that was among a long-term care facility resident. We also keep an eye on our Boulder County residents who have been confirmed to recover. So this graph shows those who we've been able to follow up with who have been at least 10 days since symptom onset with three of those days being fever, the three most recent days being fever free in addition to improvement in their symptoms. This is a quite a time intensive task. So it takes our investigators doing um, you know, follow up calls with these folks, and sometimes it's very difficult to reach them. So we may be undercounting the number of folks who are actually recovered. However, we like to be very cautious and make sure to confirm these things by speaking with those persons before counting them in this statistic. When we look at what's going on with hospitalization at a Colorado wide level, we can see that hospitalizations have been declining and it's about 466 people statewide were hospitalized for COVID-19 as of May 20th. We've seen this mirrored among patients at Boulder County hospitals. So the number of patients currently hospitalized for COVID-19 has been decreasing and is now remaining relatively steady with under 28 people currently hospitalized in Boulder County hospitals due to COVID-19. This is less than a third of when we were at our highest um, number of folks hospitalized in Boulder County hospitals for COVID-19. We also keep a close eye on our hospital resources. So our available medical and surgical beds have fluctuated a bit in the past month, but in the past week, we've maintained about 140 to 190 available medical surgical beds at Boulder County hospitals. We also keep a close eye on our number of intensive care unit beds. This has also fluctuated a bit in the past week, but with a range of about 38 to 50 intensive care unit beds available at Boulder County hospitals in the past week. Our number of available adult critical ventilators has been remaining pretty steady over the past couple of weeks and has risen quite a bit since um, early April when we had only about 30 adult critical ventilators available and now we have over 40 and we're hovering somewhere between 40 and 50. We'll also take a look at some regional and statewide data. When we look at case rates per 100,000 persons by county, Boulder County, which here is that red line you can see, has the second lowest population rate of all Denver metro counties. So that's good, you know, we're not as high as some of the other metro counties. However, we still have about 270 per 100,000 persons in Boulder County with COVID-19. We can also take a look at some regional dashboards on 2019 mobility compared to 2020 mobility. 
These data come from Tri-County Health Department's social distancing dashboard, which you can see the link for right there. We're increasingly coming closer to 2019 mobility. You can see the upward trend shown on the line here. In addition, we're able to see that our lower income residents are less able to shelter in place. The red line here shows the percentage staying at home among low income residents, whereas the blue line shows high income residents. And you can see that there's a gap between those two. Um, this could be attributed, you know, folks who are lower income may be more likely to have those essential jobs and less likely to be able to stay at home. We're also able to look at some Google mobility data. This data is last updated on May 19th and it, the data shows through May 13th. These reports are created with aggregated and anonymized sets of data from users who have turned on location services, which is turned off by default. So you can see here that Colorado and Boulder County have both seen park usage increases. We're still seeing lower mobility in areas of retail and recreation, grocery and pharmacy, transit stations, and workplaces. And of course, not surprisingly, we are seeing more mobility in the residential areas as folks have been trying to stay at home. These parks numbers, however, have dramatically risen even since last week when we were only around about 30% above baseline in Boulder County. Lastly, I just wanted to show some COVID-19 data resources. Our Boulder County Public Health COVID-19 Illness and Recovery webpage has some great graphs, many of which I showed here. It also shows more hospital resource data and some other data that was not included in this presentation as well. In addition, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment has many different data web pages, including data on case summaries, hospitalizations, and outbreaks. So I really encourage you all to peruse these resources. Thank you so much again for joining me here today. I really appreciate you all tuning in to hear a surveillance update on COVID-19.